Hello again. We're going to cover stable diffusion and upscaling sprites with it in this tutorial. Uh, stable diffusion is obviously everywhere now, but I don't think it's used much to upscale sprites, and maybe it's not always the best uh, way to do it, but I want to cover a little workflow that I think will help improve the quality of them if you're, say, trying to, you know, play with sprites in a game engine and you want to improve the quality a little bit without spending all day doing so. So I'm going to use this repository, Automatic 11.11. It's an excellent web UI to use Stable Diffusion. Um, I'm not going to really cover the installation or usage of this in particular just because it's already everywhere. But if people have trouble, let me know and I can always add that on. So a couple quick little things if you are setting this up that might be worth noting anyway. Uh, one is make sure you're using Python 3.1. 10310 and not the latest 311 because this requires torch which is a python module that has not been upgraded to the latest 3 311 python release so that's one gotcha if you're following a setup procedure make sure you do it with the uh, python 3.10 so once you've got that started up and downloaded the models from hugging face or wherever you know pick whatever i'm going to use the latest 2.1 here which uh, he has instructions for in that repository, by the way. We're going to come over to this Extras tab. And basically, we're going to be looking at this upscaling section here. Now, to give a quick uh, preview, um, end of my last video, I did kind of just show this in a different context. But I wanted to kind of touch on the sprite upscaling because I did do that here. And this is for comparison. You can see the difference in the sprites. and. Uh, now, people have a lot of different opinions about preservation, so obviously this is just if you want to do it. Uh, but I, I really like the, you know, adding the crispness and some of the, you know, maybe color color gradations that are, you know, make it look nice. There's obviously a limit to that, you know, before it starts to not be the same image anymore or, more, or before it ruins it. But like on this background map, for example, for Final Fantasy VI, I think it did a pretty nice job. Uh, so we're going to try a few examples like that. Get this out of the way. And let's uh, start with a classic one, um, Mario. So this is uh, the sprite sheet from Super Mario All-Stars. Um, so I mean, again, the original sprite, you're going to see the pixelation like we expect. So what I'm going to do is drag that into here, the stable diffusion. And this is very simple, but you know, you have to know to do it. So what I do is I put the first upscaler on nearest, and then there's this upscaler 2 option. And note the upscaler 2 visibility. That's basically saying, hey, we're going to first upscale using this and then upscale using this. And how much this second one factors in depends on the upscaler 2 visibility. So the combination I found best is, you know, just start with nearest because with sprite art, you know, you don't want to mangle it when you don't have any pixels to, to work with. So I start with nearest, which would just be making it identical, but at a higher resolution. And then this uh, Swin IR 4X is the one that I think um, actually has some benefit for sprites. You can try a like a couple of the other ones, these later ones here, and I think uh, this anime one gave okay results. Some of them were a little more blunted if you wanted like more of the scan line look. Uh, but this one I think uh, you know has the most benefit for anyone who's even interested in doing this. So let's like I'll start with that. Start with the 632. Basically I find values you know between 0.4 and 0.7 to be uh, optimal for doing something like this. It depends on the detail of the sprite which I'll kind of touch on a little more. So let's get the original again, and then we can compare. Actually, let's do this so we can see side by side to some extent here. So you can see here, you know, you get uh, some smoothening effects, which is pretty nice. You know, and Mario looks a little more uh, upscaled, modern, whatever you want to call it. Here you can see the pixelation, and you can see how it's improved it over here. And that's, that's actually a pretty good example. You know, it smooths him out, he looks good. Um, you, there is a little bit of a lower limit. So here are the original Final Fantasy sprites, for example. Uh, this is where you may not see benefit in doing this, but this is just kind of to show what I would consider kind of the lower limit of attempting something like this when you get down to these uh, very small pixel sizes. So if I pull one of those in and 
generally the less detail you have, the lower you want that second. Uh, that's when IR4X upscaler to have visibility because it's going to mangle it and just to you know do too much. I'll just to show as an example, I'll put it up near seven. We'll see the result. And this up, uh, is I mean you might be able to tell from this alone. I'm actually going to save the image. So this way we can zoom in and actually see what happens. So you'll see, you know, it's kind of getting obvious. You'll see what happens like around areas like here and here around the face. It tends to add uh, kind of artifacts. For the most part, you know, you see some cool stuff like it smooths out the edge of the hat and stuff like that. Um, but it's a double-edged sword. You can see here it kind of homogenizes the hair. And, you know, like a lot of this is mixed desirable and undesirable uh, results but you could start with this and then go in and manually edit this back with using the original sprite if you liked some of what was going on here but you know this is where you know it gets questionable i feel if we pull this down though let's say a point whatever you know we can do this again and i'll do the same thing where i save over the previous image so we can get a close look at it and you can see here, at a lower strength, you have a little less uh, smoothing of this edge in here, and you, you have more of the look of the original sprite, um, but you do still get the, you know, kind of weird artifacts, just because there just isn't enough resolution to work with, I'm assuming, and it is not enough detail or color variation. So this is an example of where it's questionable. I can see, like, here you might consider that better. It, you know, blends things together more, but anyway. Now a good example, I think, uh, is uh, a little higher detail sprite, but you know, not modern graphics, obvious, obviously. This is good old Atma. And I'm going to drag that original into here. And in this case, I'm going to kick the strength up to this, you know, a little higher like this because this has more detail to work with, so it's not going to be as destructive. And then we hit generate. And yeah, that one I don't really have to scroll in. So yeah, you see Here's the original in here. You can see that it's smoothed things out, but without really destroying the character of the image. In fact, I think it kind of improves it in cases like this, where, you know, you get the little more effect of the fire, um, you know. And once you get to this point, like, uh, you know, if you're playing around again in your game engine and you want to pull Atma into it, you can use just this. Um, but you can go even further. Um, an example of that is I did it with Kefka. So let's take Kefka's original image and then grab that in here. Do the same thing, generate the 4x image. And you can see here, that's, I would call that a, you know, almost objective improvement in this case, unless you're just really going for the sprite art style in that case, in that case, this doesn't really apply. But when, once you've gone this far, You've given the image enough resolution and you can work with it and actually feed that to prompts in let's if you go over to image to image and you put a prompt in here and then you uh, settings down here will keep it close to the original image like if you turn the denoising strength down or or the C, or rather the CFG scale if you turn that up it's going to be more faithful I think to your prompt I might have this backwards and anyway the denoising strength down will force it to adhere closer to your original image. So if you keep those settings so that you're staying close to your original image, you can prompt stable diffusion from this upscale that we just did and get some cool results. This isn't, I'm not gonna go too deep into that, but I mean, if as an example, if we, now if we're starting with this 4X image, um, I did a couple of iterations doing just that sort of workflow and obviously you'll get you know like you know you get some undesirable effects but you know this is the typical stable diffusion workflow that everyone's kind of shown you can take masks and pieces but uh, whatever but I, like this one's pretty good i think so you can get you know some fun derivatives of some art that you're a fan of and that's actually what i did with this overworld piece it's just um i didn't do any um prompting i just did the upscaling and it got you know got to the result we showed before uh this one it's a big image it turned out that um after 
4xing that, you get pretty much the maximum size that you want that you want in you know in Godot, for example, because uh, it starts off here at 4128. So it takes a long time when you put a giant image like that in there, um, but you could break it up if you if you so needed. Another good example I thought was Locke, who was also in that scene, obviously. And this one was kind of borderline. If you get really close, you can see a little bit of artifact uh, coming into play here. And that's, again, just how much you uh, play with that second visibly side. If you put it down to zero, it's literally just going to scale it up to, and it's going to look the same. So the nice part about this, I think, again, is that you can control how much exposure uh, you have to. If you're more of the purist personality, then you can you can just upscale or even put just a very little bit of this, but if you really want to start uh, playing with it, you can crank it up. 